Back to today's video. Today is Saturday, July 8th, 2023, and today we are going to be talking about the upcoming 2024 United States House of Representative elections, important elections that will determine the balance of power as we head into the next Congress following the upcoming presidential year. Now, on your screen right now is the 2024 generic congressional vote polling. This is what we call generic ballot polling that gives a general indicator about where the country is between Democrats and Republicans and their preference for who to lead the next Congress. As of right now, the Democratic Party leads by just 0.4% nationwide, but ultimately is a telling indicator that Democrats are on track to win back House control. For a point of reference, we can see that in the 2022 midterm elections, the most recent election year, the Republican Party was up by 2.5% nationally on the Real Clear Politics average. That ended up being quite accurate with a 2.8% victory, ultimately, for the GOP by the end of all the votes being counted. Now, this 2.5% victory, one might think, given that Democrats have won the popular vote in every election in the 21st century except for one, that it means the Republican Party had a monumental victory in the 2022 midterm. Well, we obviously know from the election results that that simply was not true. With just 53, uh, sorry, just uh, 222 seats, Republicans effectively flipped less than 10 seats from the Democratic Party in totality or overall net. The Republicans being at 222 to 213 is quite interesting, especially given that the last House elections were also 222 to 213, just in a different direction. Now, looking at the 2022 House results, there's a number of areas in which the Democratic Party is set to do even better, given the new generic ballot polling numbers. Again, this is the result when Democrats lose nationally by about three points. Now, to the contrary point here, the Democrats did win the generic ballot in 2020 by 3.1 percent and also had a 222 to 213 map. But the congressional districts now in a brand new drawn congressional map in every single state uh, puts the Democratic Party in a better position in 2024 than they were even in 2020. That's because Republicans have dominated redistricting control over the past decade, including this one, at which they drew a map that was ultimately very beneficial for their ending. However, what we saw was that the gerrymandering can only go so far as voters do, and you can see that in the 2022 midterms, despite many overwhelmingly drawn unfair maps in favor of the GOP, for instance, this Ohio map was drawn to be 13 to 2, 13 in favor of the GOP. Democrats ultimately won in Ohio's 13th, Ohio's 1st, Ohio's 9th, and they were able to do well, in some cases win by significant margins, given that they were drawn to be GOP gerrymanders, which is a testament that, Yes, a map can be drawn in an unfair fashion, and 10 to 5 doesn't even do Ohio justice with the amount of Democratic support that exists there, but it does show that sometimes these gerrymanders aren't absolute, which is why the 2022 midterms were so favorable for the Democratic Party. Now, looking ahead to 2024, there's a number of uh, maps that are going to change, redistricting that is either court-ordered or might be court-ordered, depending on the circumstance. Now, the GOP has been heavily counting on redistricting in a major state that gave Democrats a seven-seat uh, delegation in the United States House. That's the state of North Carolina, that in previous maps have always been drawn as an unfair one, to be quite frank. You can see at the beginning of the century, century beginning of the decade, uh, the Democrats went in 2010 with seven seats to the Republican Party six, to the next election at just winning four. That's because, I mean, you can see this clear as day, the way these maps were drawn were honestly quite laughable. They combated some of the biggest cities uh, in the entire state because they knew this would allow Republicans to be able to win across the state. It was enacted again in 2014, and you can see here that the Democratic Party was only able to win just three seats in this circumstance. Again, some of the most gerrymandered districts in the entire country. Then came 2016. They were forced to redraw, and it gave Democrats not an additional seat, but an opportunity at winning more. Then came 2018. Republicans almost lost a seat here. Dan Bishop uh, retired here, uh, resulted in a special election, uh, North Carolina's 9th district competitive here. You can see, though, across these maps, a number of them were competitive districts. A number of them were ultimately, uh, you know, well within striking distance for Democrats. Then came 2020, another court-ordered redistricting, because what this showed, actually, you will see in the 2018 House results is that Democrats only lost the vote by just two points, yet only got three seats. One of the most egregious gerrymanders uh, that resulted in a map that was eight to five, and then they drew another map. It was redistricted again because uh, it was gerrymandered, and Democrats ultimately ended up winning seven seats. So what is my takeaway here? Why am I spending so much time telling you about North Carolina? The Republican 
Republicans are going to redraw it here. They recently got control of the uh, state Supreme Court. Previously, it was in Democratic control. Now it is in Republican control. And you will see a court decision striking down this map, allowing the state legislature to return to potentially a 10 to, uh, a 10 to 4 advantage over the Democrats. We will see what happens here because we have seen it already on the national level. We'll come back to New York because that's another example of a redistricting state. But you will see that the old uh, appeal here, uh, let's see if we can find the old map, um, which gave the Republicans an overwhelming majority. They led in all of these open districts here, and they were on track to defeat the Democrats. It was going to be 10 to 4, and now it's 7 to 7. But with this new map, Republicans are hoping, at least were hoping, prior to a number of decisions that have recently come down, uh, that the map would fit, shift even more in their favor. But with the generic ballot looking in favor of the Democratic Party, and historically, the generic ballot polling has almost always been accurate, you can see here that in 2024, if North Carolina alone was to shift, maybe Republicans would have a fighting chance because it is so close, because it was so close in 2020, that maybe there's a reason to think that Republicans could hold on. And I do think that they have a very, very good shot at holding on to House control. I just think the Democratic Party's chances are better, and I'll explain why. Not only is it the generic ballot, but namely the state of New York, which went to the Republicans uh, overwhelmingly in a number of these battleground districts. Republicans won 11 seats here. They were only set to pick up 10 in the worst case scenario for Democrats. Even the DCCC, which is the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee chair, Sean Patrick Maloney, lost in his district to the Republicans. So looking at this map here, never really a good result for Democrats, no matter what district you look at. But this map wasn't the original enacted proposal. The state legislature in the state of New York tried to do what North Carolina did and overwhelmingly gerrymandered the district. And you can see here that this is a map that was made to be fair. The one on your screen is what the court ordered to be drawn, and ultimately it was meant to give the Democratic Party uh, a realistic shot at winning many of these districts while also giving the Republican Party a number of uh, shots at winning realistic seats. You can see in the 22nd, in the 19th, that what we ultimately ended up seeing happen on election night was that Democrats lost in practically every single competitive district. I mean, not one did they win besides the 18th district that was set to be competitive. In fact, there were a number of districts that Democrats were supposed to win in. For example, here in New York's 4th district, the Republicans ended up winning. Democratic incumbents in a number of these, I mean, we can just see the comparison. You go back 15 to 11, keep that in mind. What was it in 2020? It was 19 to 8. Think about that. The collapse of the New York Democrats. But... New news, because the court was the re ruling party that decided the map had to be redrawn, this is the old map, by the way, I think it's just interesting to take a look at, the old map here was set to give Democrats an overwhelming advantage in practically every district, except for four that were going to be solid, and even in these open seats, Democrats were going to be the uh, open seat Democrats here. You can see that New York was set to be a state where Democrats were going to be platformed well, the court decided to strike it down, but there's a new court in town. The New York court actually agreeing to hear arguments to redraw the state congressional maps, allowing this opportunity. I mean, the Democrat who championed the dissent for the congressional maps, saying that the old state legislative lines should be kept in place, is now the chief justice in the New York Supreme Court. You have the highest court that previously was held by a former Republican turned Democrat under Andrew Cuomo, but still aligned with the GOP in many ways, who chose to retire here. Now the New York Supreme Court is now led by the Democrat, and of course, vacancy opens up, putting somebody else in. You now have a court led by one of the most influential Democratic judges within the state who's going to lead the charge in favor of redrawing the map. So unless there are other Democrats who will shift party line from where they voted in the last decision, New York's on track for another redraw, which means you can see very much a map in which Democrats are now leading in 22 out of the 26 districts versus just 15. It's interesting to see. We don't know what the results will be. Maybe this gerrymander will backfire, but it's not just New York. My reasoning as to why I think Democrats are on track to win doesn't just end there. There was also a Supreme Court decision that ruled that in violation of the Voting Rights Act, Alabama has to redraw their congressional map, but not just Alabama. Based off the amount of minority voters within a state, proportionally, there should be the same opportunity for them to be represented in the United States Congress. And unfortunately for the Republicans in Alabama, that means this six to one map no longer is going to hold up. 
It means they are being forced to draw an additional Democratic district. Individual seats may not seem like they matter in a 435 person Congress, but when the map goes down to being decided, in this case, by five seats, had the five seats gone in a different direction, Democrats would have been able to win House control and maintain it. And Nancy Pelosi would be speaker today and not Kevin McCarthy or maybe Hakeem Jeffries, whoever it might be. You can see that 222 to 213 here is narrow enough that individual seats absolutely matter. It's not just Alabama, though. We also widely expect Louisiana to have to draw an additional map. You can see exactly how gerrymandered this state is. Well, guess what? It looks like it's going to go ahead and backfire on the GOP. A court's likely going to rule in their favor, and if not, the Supreme Court will because they already have. South Carolina is also set for a conversation about a redraw. We don't know exactly if this redraw will happen because the first district has striking uh, possibilities for Democrats to win. But there is a good possibility that South Carolina is redrawn, given that the map typically ends up being just one Democrat for a state with over a third of the population being minority residents. The state of Wisconsin as well is also likely to be struck down with their map here. You can find that it does violate the Voting Rights Act. It does compact uh, you know, minority voters, but not in the way that we have seen uh, in terms of allowing a representation of Congress here. You can see that there is a map six to two. Well, when you look at the House results, even in 2020, when it comes to down to the overall popular vote that Republicans win by three, yet Democrats ultimately only win three or, uh, two or three seats. And it depends on the election year because obviously in the next election, well, the Republicans drew a map and ultimately ended up giving the Democrats just two seats. But still, competitive district here, competitive district here within possibility in a blue wave year, but not always. And we can expect this map to be redrawn as well. So with redraws in South Carolina, Alabama, uh, Wisconsin, New York, you can start to see that there is going to be a larger possibility the Democrats do well. There are now people making the case in Georgia that this also does as well, and I think there is an argument to be made here as well. Texas, too. You can see just the way they draw this map. They've compacted regions of the state together uh, in an unfair way to ensure entrenched Republican victory regardless of minority representation, minority population, whatever it might be. And you will find that these cases will be argued, tried, and tested, and likely elevated all the way up to the highest court, which will, in most cases, I don't imagine they will walk back because it's so recent, it's not new justices will reaffirm their decision uh, that that uh, these maps need to be redrawn. Alabama is first, Louisiana is next, and then they start to crumble. Looking at all of these advancements for the Democratic Party, because the larger uh, amount of minority districts will ultimately end up with a larger amount of Democrats in the delegation. That's simply how it works. And you've seen this across the United States in years past, but we have not seen it in effect for 2024. As we start to see more and more maps uh, sort of released and uh, implemented for the upcoming election cycle, we will have more of a concrete uh, point of evidence that the House is turning in the direction of the Democratic Party. But what we know right now isn't just speculation. It's based off of court hearings. It's based off of court decisions. It's also based off of new numbers that we have that stand in a huge contrast to the 2022 polls. When the Democrats are now leading versus the Republicans before, it tells you that Democrats are probably going to do well. And with the exception of the 2020 presidential election year, almost always do Democrats gain seats in House election years uh, that coincide with presidential elections. Even in years where Democrats, quite frankly, underperform in a number of battleground states on the national level. For instance, in the state uh, of Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Iowa, Ohio, Hillary Clinton's election, well, you see here that the Democrats, in fact, gained six seats, even though it was an abysmal year for the Democratic Party. In 2010, Democrats were at 193. After 2012, they were at 201. You can see in 2006, they were at 233. After 2008, they were at 257. In 2002, Democrats were at 206. In 2004, they did reduce, but this is one of the only years. Oh, this is a weird map. It is really, really more hard to look at. Um, I just want you to look at this for a second. Um, they went down, but this was also an exceptional year. But you will find that historically speaking, I mean, Democrats are set to do well, depending on the election year, especially during a presidential election, especially when the districts that Republicans won weren't just in ones where Democrats have a fighting shot. It's typically competitive. You're talking Biden double digit districts. George Santos, for instance, won in a district that Joe Biden won by over 10 points. He won by eight in 2022. Now, if he's the nominee, I don't expect him to win. But if a Republican is the nominee as well, another Republican, they have a fighting shot. But it is really hard to outrun a candidate winning by 10. 
When Kathy Hochul is the top ticket Democrat and only winning by five in a state Biden won by over 25, you start to see why there wasn't as much of a push to elect down ballot Republicans if you're already voting Republican at the top of the ticket. When Democrats have to face this opportunity between Trump and Biden or New York voters in general, they will pick Biden. They will overwhelmingly pick Biden and as a result will be way more likely to vote down ballot. Ticket splitting does not exist the way it used to and we will probably not see much of it in these House, Senate, or gubernatorial elections in 2024, which ultimately is a huge benefit for the Democratic Party. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2024 election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all later today.